Right, everybody, the Trek-inspired Malaga is over. Today, we're kicking off the Malaga Blueprint. My tactical blueprint, a video that I put out a couple of weeks ago, been very popular on the channel. Go check it out if you haven't. Everything that I would do if I started managing football teams again, and uh, we've decided to move it into the Malaga save. So in the last episode, we resigned at the end of, what, season 11, I think it was, or season 12, Jose Trequino retired the Argentinian. Today, it is all about what I have done in my first summer. We had to start a whole new shortlist. The scouting has been completely changed. New assistant manager coming in as well to help me bed in to life in Spain. So I need to bring another Englishman with me. Few little transfer dealings as well. And we've made a tremendous start to life in La Liga. We've also got a few Champions League games. Things are looking pretty good for the Malaga blueprint. All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now, I thought I would show you our little league update. So after eight games, we are third place, played five, uh, sorry, played eight, won five, drawn three, lost none. The wins coming over Levante, Osasuna 6-0, Almira 3-0, uh, Girona 4-0, who were up there last season, and Athletic Club away from home 3-2. A really good start to the season. Three draws as well. Away at Valencia, not a bad result. You know, one of the bigger, bigger sides in the division. Away at Real Madrid, and they scored in stoppage time to break our hearts. And at nil-nil with Barcelona. So, we are competing now with the big boys. And as you can see, no games lost. 23 goals in eight games and only seven conceded. We're tight at the back so far. However, we have shipped in a couple over the last few games. As you can see... We haven't kept a clean sheet in two games. There's a 2-2 two -two down against Nice as well. Our Champions League phase has started pretty well. One win, one draw as you look to advance. Get some more money in the bank. The bank balance has been tricky. Has meant the summer hasn't been too busy. Now, the first thing we actually did do was offer new contracts to uh, Bullockow, who's gone up from about 50 grand to 96,000. So this is where a lot of our wages went. Apahov has gone up from 46,000 again to 105,000, but one of the best players in the world. Senator, I think he's gone up about 15 grand a week. Barashina uh, went up about 10, once again, about 10 or 15 grand. We also gave Mark, Gu uh, Mark Jui a new contract, same offer. Esteval was the big one. He has gone up to, he was on about 150. He wanted 400 and we had to settle for 350. I just didn't want to go into my debut season having my best player unhappy. I think the value was too high to sell on as well. So I thought, let's just offer him the big bucks. Ardagula there, he's only got two years left. So we've got a few, oh, Edu Sanchez as well. Left back, had one year left. We needed to tie him to a new deal. He went up from about 96 to 110. And Miguel Angel, our youth product, signed a new deal as well from about 35 to 96. So a lot of our money, bearing in mind as well, we pretty much have been given the same registration rules. We had 1.8 million last year and we had 1.8 million this year. So that's a little bit disappointing. We did then... Strengthen the squad. We've bought in a couple of, like, our B team, by the way, are having an absolute stink. And we were really short in the under-19s and B team. I'll show you that. We really need to have a really big impact over this part of the season, making sure our youth intake, we just sign as many as we can to bolster numbers. And I've signed a couple of players just to help out the B team. We've lost the load just out of contract. Wanted, like, £20,000 £20, a week to be in the B team. We just, we could afford it. But we couldn't have it in terms of squad registration rules. So it means our B team are really struggling this season. So a couple of dodgy ins like John Pacheco. Uh, he's quite a young, talented defender, actually, at the start of the game. I think he just scored for the weekend, actually, for Real Sociedad, his first goal. But we've brought in Lorenzo Luca. He's our sort of like fourth, fifth choice striker. He's a youngster that's not going to play. He's an old veteran. Uh, he's in the B team, 4,200 a week. Ryan Gravenberg is in 115,000, so that's a big amount of money. Low on the uh, price tag, 3.8. He is 32, going to be 33 at the end of the season. Just a one-year deal, but I just thought we just we were just struggling with getting quality in. Potentially going to be a backup as well. We've still got Gula, we've still got Estevayo. They're my two really standouts for central midfield. So someone who's happy just being a little bit of a backup. Can do multiple positions, you can do the holding role as well. 
can do both sides of the attacking role. Decent physicals as well, considering he's 32. Our best signing is probably Urakinio. He is a 25-year-old Brazilian, six foot, and really, really good in terms of physicals, mentals, good first touch. Tackling's obviously not great, but we're not after that. Both footed as well. Tries killer balls, plays one twos, dictates tempo, plays his way out of trouble, tries long range passes. A really decent looking player, and he's made a pretty decent start to life in Malaga, considering he's played all of his career in Brazil. And as you can see, those two seasons over 50 goal, what was that, 50, 30, yeah, over nearly 60 goal contributions across two seasons, so a really talented player. We also had Linares, the loney from last year, his move was made permanent, and Alvaro Fernandez, we had him a few years ago for two years, we made massive profit on him, we've now got him back as a 36-year-old, and he's probably our backup second-choice goalkeeper. On the outs, we obviously lost... Anyone you recognise him there? Teo was leaving on a free. We may do a deal to get him back. Uh, he's only got two years. I, I fancy just having him back just for a season. I'm definitely getting him on the coaching staff. They're all backups. We did lose. See, this is the thing. We lost Julia Cesar, who was someone who was not good enough for the first team, but assigned as a backup in Leon 2, and it would have been good if we could have kept him. So he's been a loss. David Marcos as well has gone to Inter uh, Calgary, but he did Inter Milan, yeah. Inter Milan, then Calgary. Um, once again, wasn't good enough. He wanted more. He wanted nearly 20 grand to play for us in the B team, and we couldn't afford it. So he's gone. That's made us really weak. A couple of other players as well. Aisa, goalkeeper, third choice goalkeeper. He was being gone. And then Koku had a really good season and a half with us, but he was at the age of, what was he? Yeah, 33, going to be 34 at Christmas. So good to get him, not out of the door, but didn't need to sign him to a new deal, especially when we knew wages were going to be tight. Madaweke retired. And then to help with squad registration in terms of wages, we had to shift 65 grand a week off and we managed to get rid of Luka Vosic. We've got better options in all areas in terms of centre-backs and holding midfield. So it made sense to kind of let him go. We didn't get... We got OK and yeah, we made money on him. We've made money on him in a season, so I'm more than happy with that. So that has left our squad quite tight. We have got the youngsters coming through. So now we've obviously got Gubulaka, one of the best players in the world. Um, Tabare is the uh, backup right back. He's only 17 years old, not going to be 18 till the end of the season. We're just bedding him in. We've managed to get his natural fitness up from four to five. So we need to keep working on that over the next three or four years. But all in all, we're looking pretty good. On the goal front, Miguel Angel is now our centre forward, advanced forward. Hernandez has made a decent start. I'm a little bit disappointed he's not actually got any assists yet as the target man, the player that's dropping off a little bit. Now we are open to changing this tactic in terms of a couple of roles and I have done that already. So I've actually got rid of the two wide centre backs. I wanted us to be defensively more strong. So we've got them coming wider in possession. So we build up with a wide back three. That should then push our wing backs higher and then dribble more. So they attack, but we don't want them going on these crazy overlaps. I'm quite happy for us to stay pretty central. The midfield, this defender here, we've got as an anchor. We may change that at some point. I've also been playing around with Virgil van Dijk as a, as a libero in the Ruben Amarin tactics. So there's an option that we might even go with a libero on defend as well at some point. So there's definitely things we could change and tweak, but we're looking at this 3-5-2 structure. I'm really happy to see two strikers up there. I am a two-man striker kind of guy. Right, the under-19s is looking pretty thin. We've managed to sign a couple of players just to help both. Like, that's one of the signings we made. Obviously nowhere near good enough, but just someone who could bolster it. We are doing well. We're first. We're probably going to win that, hopefully, again. We have drawn a game against Almira, but we're looking so far okay. It's the B team that is causing, not cause for concern, because if we go down, we go down. It's not the end of the world. It's definitely a season that I've actually dropped down as well. Ala Shalalata, who I wanted to give some game time to, and I thought I need him in the B team. So I've moved him down into the B team to help out. And it looks like they've won a game. They've won a game and drawn a few because we had a, tr a really tricky start. It does look like we're going to get relegated this year, but we will bounce back next season. A little bit of a change as well in terms of the staff. We need to still get some more coaches in. However, it's not massive, seeing as we've not got that many players at the moment. We are working like I don't need scouts. And by the looks of it, we need to bring in some other staff as well. We've got a new manager in Ica Angula. Now, it is a region, but a very, very good region. He was the new Mancia manager, under 90s manager. So we've brought him across. 
Lucas Sagnale, the guy that I have on the back of my Malaga shirt, he's back. He's retired at the end of 2028. Been out of the game for a while. I've just brought him back as assistant manager. Our B team manager as well left in the summer, gone on to manage a team. I can't actually find him in the game. It's weird that he's on my staff. If we go on transfers, transfer history and staff, he's nowhere to be seen, which is a little bit weird But because uh, he was part of the staff last season. B team manager sort of he doesn't do the B team and then that leads us nicely on to what we've done with the A's like the senior team so obviously I'm in I got rid of Diego Codin just because I wanted to bring in someone and I wanted to bring a defensive coach and we've gone with Big John Big John Terry is my assistant manager decent mentals uh, decent defending 20 tactical 15 so he will do a job wanted to bring an Ishman in and then we've backed up with some other places including quite a broad range of changes to our scouting including a new scout the Greek scout who had been a chief scout at Parma 20 player ability 20 60 potential extensive in load of areas so we've brought him in we've also brought in a few others as well and we've changed all of our recruitment focuses obviously because i retired our shortlist has depleted unfortunately so we are having to build a new shortlist and i'm really hoping over the next few uh, months up to the end of the season we can really bolster young players for next season i'm really trying to look at young players for next season our scouting coverage. So what I've done is went through all the scouts and given them all an assignment. So they're all doing bits and bobs for us. So our knowledge is good. Our scouts, we're not currently scouting in there in Africa, which is weird. I think he may be doing another another scout report at the moment, but he's bringing stuff in for us. So we've got a nice scope of areas to target. And if we look at the recruitment focuses, we've got Belgium and France being looked at, Germany and the Netherlands, South Europe, so we're looking at places like Italy, uh, and I think there was a couple of others in there. Spain as just a one-off going through all the players in Spain. Chile, Colombia and Uruguay, Japan, Serbia, Russia, R Romania and Ukraine, because we've had some brilliant uh, results from Ukraine in terms of Apohov and someone else. Uh, Blukau, the right wing back. Northern Europe, which is Scandinavia, Mexico and USA, 15 to 20 year olds, which is a new one. So they're going through some players for us at the moment in and around the B teams. Argentina, we've also set up a scout report for the under 19s league where we're going to try and bring in some players, try and get players with decent value. Maybe not going to be exactly first team material, but if they've got a potential, we'll sign them on, play them in the under 19s and then get them into the B team next year. Brazil, always a good place. Africa, nothing's really happening in that yet. And Portugal as well. Now, one little tip when you're doing your scouts, obviously I've gone through the scouts and put them in the areas where they're strongest. For here, make sure you untick that. If you assign any analysis, it gave all of my jobs to the same guy. He had 16 reports to do, while all the others were doing zero. So I've kind of shared them all out, apart from him there, who's not got an assignment at the moment. But everyone else is neatly shared out. So just something to be aware of when you're setting up. And that's how I generally set them up. Minimum current ability, half a star, because they could be 15 and maybe not an absolute world beater. So I'm happy for that. And then minimum potential ability, three and a half star. And then with a couple of things put in, depending, always ongoing. So it's constantly going round. Any position in the tactic as well. We're not looking at sort of like, we're just trying to build a database of players that are good. I'm not really looking out for in particular players. I think close to the time, if no players are leaving, in particular Ardagula, we've either kind of already got the next Ardagula ready. You know, we look at the age of the squad, 25.78. We've got a couple of, so these players here, like Alvaro Fernandez isn't an issue. Luca isn't an issue. Gravenberch is an issue because he's back up. But the first one is Gula and Sanchez. So we really need to look at potentially replacements for them. And hopefully over the next 12 months, we'll have some scouting reports through. We've kind of got the Brazilian, potentially do add a Gula's role, but it would be nice to get a real baller in there in terms of the technicals. Look at the greens, 15 plus on all those technicals and he's made a decent start to the season. So that is it for the Malaga Blueprint episode one, episode two out in the later of the week and we'll just do a classic let's play and we'll pick up a couple of games. We've got an absolutely horrendous run in November. Madrid away, Chelsea home, Betis home, Sevilla away and Leverkusen away. So we might pick up a couple of really tough games in there. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. By the way, as well, just show you, we've got 15 million to spend in the budget. So there is money to play with, with the wages, lovely slow. So I'm aiming to spending that 15 mil on some youngsters, getting some youngsters in, in the Malaga Blueprint. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. See you later.